We just got body cam footage and other footage from the killing, the brutal killing, suffocation of Daniel Prude. Daniel Prude, uh, who died on March 30th, he died seven days after police officers put a hood over his head. He was having a psychological break, a mental health crisis. And instead of bringing, utilizing any other resources, some mental health counselor, someone who could have helped that situation, police officers put a hood over his head and press his face to the ground for two minutes um, until he went unconscious. And then uh, seven days after that, he died. I'll give you the particulars of those stories. I'm going to play a portion of uh, one of the videos. Um, it's not the full video. The video was almost eight minutes eerily reminiscent of uh, the George Floyd video uh, in terms of length and in terms of substance. I'm not going to play the full video or the audio, um, but I am going to play about a minute of it so that you can hear it. And the reason I want you to hear it is because I want you to hear what these police officers ignored. I want you to hear that they ignored his cries. They ignored his pleas. And the fact that this man posed no actual threat to them because they were out there to check on his. It was a wellness check. His brother, who I know regrets it, called the police to come help with a mental health crisis that was occurring and the police killed him. I'll play some audio from the brother. I'm taking my time before I go into it because this has been a hell of a day. The stories that we have to cover today are grim. And it's a stark, it is a grim reality about what we're facing in this country, the uphill battle we're facing in this country. And then not only the uphill battle that we're facing in terms of justice or injustice or our fight for justice, it's an uphill battle in terms of dealing with the malevolently disingenuous people who will watch this video and find a way to justify this man's murder. They're out there. No questions. They are out there and they're going to show up soon. They're going to find a way something in this man's past. They're going to find a way to just say, oh, well, he he stole candy in third grade. Or he he got arrested for marijuana in 2018. They're going to find something and use that as a justification um, for his murder. And I don't know if I'm emotionally ready to deal with them today, but I know I am, I'm emotionally ready to beat their asses, rhetorically speaking, of course. But this is where we are in this country. And we've been here for some time. So... Um, content warning i i want you to if you're not interested in seeing this um if this is too much for you fast forward past this and uh come back after uh, about 60 uh let's say 90 seconds here's the first footage of daniel prude uh being suffocated by police officers in rochester now give me the mayor so give me the mayor bare skin. give me the mayor on oh, my were... mama blood, they flipping over in her grave. I mean that. Flip. Get the fuck up. Give me that gun. Are you on five? Give me that gun. Give me that gun, not me. All right, all right, all right. Take this shit off my face. No, that gun, not me. All right, all right, all right. Take this shit off my face. No, I got it. I mean it. I'm already in it. Drag and kill me. And Jesus came out of me. That's what my you're gonna mama flipping over in her grave, man. No gun. I mean it. 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 <laughs> Stop. Calm down. Stop. Calm down. Calm down, okay? Get the feet Get the Get the Um, and again, my apologies for you having to hear that and to watch that, uh, but it's necessary because they ignored his cries for help held him with a bag over his head for two minutes until he passed out. And then he died days later. He was experiencing a mental health crisis. 
They weren't there because he committed any act of violence. They were not there because he uh, committed any crime. His crime was having mental health issues. I want to play a clip of his brother. And I know this brother has to feel a level of, of guilt because he's the one who called the police. But he called the police hoping that they would help. And ultimately, they killed his brother. Take a listen in. I placed a phone call for my brother to get help. Not for my brother to get lynched. Now, when I say got lynched, that was a full-fledged, ongoing murder. Cold-blooded. None other than cold-blooded murder. How did you sit here and not even directly say, the man is defenseless, butt naked on the ground. He's a cuffed up already. I mean, come on. How many more brothers got to die for society to understand that this needs to stop? And I can't even share with y'all the pain that I'm feeling and my family is going through as well. Who can we hold accountable for this? Why was it a cover up? Why did my brother get harmed when he complied with everything that them people wanted him to do? Why did he get treated like an African-American male from 1960? That's the case you should have just sucked a damn dog on him. To treat somebody unhumane like that. You killed a defenseless black man, a father's son, a brother's brother, a nephew's uncle. I mean, come on. Come on, indeed. Um, so already um, people are trying to make justifications for it. They're already floating things. Oh, he was high on PCP. Is that the crime? I mean, is, is that the crime that warrants a death sentence? Right. Uh, that he had COVID-19 and he was spitting. Is that the is that a crime worthy of death of a death sentence? What bothers me in this country is that there's no level to which people who don't want to recognize the nature, the true nature of this police state. They, there's no level to which they won't stoop. There's literally nothing because they have a vested interest in maintaining this hermetically sealed protection, protective bubble around the police state. Because the police state serves a very particular function. Now, the useful idiots who come out on social media, they are doing it because, well, they're just useful idiots. The police state doesn't serve them. It may serve their ideology, but it no more serves them than their ideology serves them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like what they're doing is that the useful morons on social media who are doing the bidding of the police state and the ruling elite by creating narratives to undermine our pursuit for justice. What they're doing is trying to protect their ideology when the police state will be brought down on them the moment they realize that their ideology doesn't really serve them. But so long as so long as they keep this this thing in their head where, you know, these these white conservatives Let's just call them who they are. Generally speaking, they are all white conservatives and the collaborators of color that help them. So long as they can, so long as they fall neatly in line with what the rulers of this country and of this world want, then the police, they will never bother them. And so they're perfectly fine saying and doing whatever they have to making up lies, making up propaganda, spreading it, justifying clear murder justifying it it doesn't matter what the case is we can lit we have literally seen police officers shoot people in the back as they ran away walked away hell on their knees daniel shaver was on his knees begging for his life and they justified his murder too and he was a white guy so what the hell do you think they're doing with black people that's that's the reality of this system. The reality of this system is that you have people at every single level who believe that this system is doing something good for them when in reality it is exploiting their useful idiot asses as much as it is exploiting us. They are the ones who are some of these people are unemployed right now because of the idiocy of this government. Some of these people are, are facing evictions right now because of the idiocy of their government. But they are so committed to finding ways of stopping our pursuit for justice 
that they will ignore the reality that this system has abused them. This system has exploited them. It doesn't matter. They are committed to this system and their ideology. And most of all, their hate filled bigotry. They are so committed to it that they will protect a police state that would just as soon crush the, the life out of them as it did George Floyd. But they are useful idiots. And then, of course, you have the politicians. I don't I don't even care. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care whether this guy, whether this. Um, well, actually, we know this is happening in Rochester, New York. So we know it was a, it's a democratically ran state. I was getting ready to say I don't care what the, the political structure is of that state. And I don't. I don't care if it's Republican or Democrat. What people don't what people don't understand is that the nature of this system benefits both parties, benefits the ruling elite, which is protected by both parties. There's no question about that. People are, oh, it's a Democratic. Do you think that these type of murders don't happen in Republican? You know, hell, you got you got vigilante Republicans running around here thinking they are the law. The devaluation of black lives in this country specifically. But also the lives of anyone who would stand up against this system, to be sure. That devaluation happens no matter the political persuasion because it is a necessary evil that they are more than happy to continue so long as we continue to protect as the police state because the police state protects them ah. god damn america that's all i can say jeremiah wright was right Goddamn America, because this country will kill you in cold blood and then justify your murder and then make you apologize for protesting against those murders.